Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity where we are a Christ-centered church sharing faith, hope, and love with each other, our neighbors, and the world. Welcome to Holy Trinity for Easter morning. Just an announcement, um, you are all invited downstairs in the fellowship hall after worship for a light Easter breakfast. All are invited. And if you're visiting or a guest with us for the first time, know that communion is open. All are welcome at Christ's table. I invite you to stand as you're able for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen today.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds, negativity took root, and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we return to this familiar text, help us to hear differently this morning. Open our ears that we might hear the sound of alleluias ringing through this text. Open our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter in this hearing, may we move closer to you. God of the empty tomb, we are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And Trinity and I are going to tell a story to you about Mary Magdalene. And I might need some of my older youth. I know you're too big for this, but I might need you guys to come and help pass out because Trinity brought treats for everybody. So Amanda, would you help me? <laughs> Nathan, I'd ask you, but you're way up there. <laughs> um, it might be, a, it should be fine with the three of you. Yes, yeah, sit down with us, because Trinity brought a big white Easter egg today because she wanted to tell you a story about Mary Magdalene. And this is one of those kind of legends that, you know, as famous people kind of through time get kind of built up. People tell more stories about each other, kind of like George Washington, I mean, or Abraham Lincoln and all that kind of, kind of like that. So, yeah, so Trinity wanted to share this story about Ma Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, as you're going to hear in the gospel, was one of the first people to go to the tomb and realize what? Anybody can help me. Yeah, Jesus was gone. And just a young man or an angel was there and told her, you know, didn't you, do you remember? He said he wouldn't be here. And it's true. So she was one of the first people to find that out with her friends. And so from there, she decided, well, I better go and tell more people, because I remember now Jesus told us to go out and preach, share the good news with everyone. So legend has it that she went to the emperor of Rome um, and greeted with him with the greeting, Christ is risen. And what do we say usually? Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's practice that, everybody. Mary said, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Do you think the emperor of Rome said that back? Nope. <laughs> he didn't. He said, Christ has no more risen than that egg right there. My egg for breakfast is red. He said, no, I'm not believing that. What do you think happened? The egg turned red. So if you see icons of Mary, which on the next screen you'll see, often Mary Magdalene has a red egg with her, and that's the meaning of that red egg. And so the red egg symbolizes at Easter that you're to go and share the good news of Christ is risen with everybody else. So we have red eggs for all of you in the congregation for yourselves to remember that Christ is risen and to share with other people that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. All right, you guys can go out and... Yes, please hand those out. <laughs> Thank you. As the eggs are being passed out, hear these words from Scripture. Our first reading is from Psalm 118. We'll read it responsibly. I'll read the light text. You respond with the dark. 
O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Thanks be to God. You just stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. At very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance of the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they, they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. If there was ever a cartoon movie that could sum up the disciples' reactions to the events surrounding them in the last days of Jesus' life, it is this movie, already nine years old. It's called Inside Out. Anybody know it? Yeah, a few people do. So this is a movie about a child who is uprooted from his life in the Midwest, and goes to California, and so she's learning to deal with new emotions as along the way. Emotions such as anger, joy, fear, disgust, and sadness. And today in the Gospel, we heard again the story of Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Slomi, who experienced more emotions at the end of an already traumatic week. Think about it. They went from the festivities of Palm Sunday to Monday, Thursday, to the grief and pain of Good Friday. 
now in a moment they probably assumed would be a quiet time for them to care for Jesus' body, they encounter something that turns their life upside down. On the way to the tomb that morning, they wonder, how are we going to move that large stone? Only to get there and find it's already moved. But I'm sure they had more questions then, like, who moved it and what happened? So they enter the tomb, probably a little hesitant, because this isn't what they were used to. And they enter, encounter a young man sitting there in a white robe, waiting seemingly just for them, so they can tell, he can tell them the good news. Of course they were alarmed. Who wouldn't be alarmed? The young man, seeking to reassure and remind them of Jesus' word, says calmly, don't be alarmed. Jesus has been raised from the dead. He is not here. Oh, and by the way, as you leave, would you mind going to tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is waiting for you all in Galilee, just like he told you? Well, it's no wonder they fled in fear. A messenger of the Lord had just spoke to them. Their minds were overwhelmed with fear and wonder. And for a time, that fear won out of all the emotions they were experiencing that morning. Perhaps you have had that type of fear grab hold of you in your life the kind that kind of sits in the bottom of your stomach, not allowing you to move for a while. It's a type of emotion that can also have physical aspects to it. You may begin to like cry, yell, or shake, and sometimes you just want to curl up in a ball and just disappear for a while. That's the kind of day the women were having However, along with that fear, they also felt amazement and wonder. Talk about a roller coaster of an emotions, right? All four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, expressed that the disciples were feeling those emotions those early days. And yet, we are all here because they overcame that fear. So how did they go from hiding in the upper room or running for the, from the tomb, determined not to tell anyone what would happen, to telling so many people that they traveled to distant lands and some of them even losing their lives as they told the story of Jesus' resurrection? It's an interesting thing that the birth of Jesus also had these two contrasting emotions of fear and amazement for those closest to Jesus. However, Easter, unlike Christmas, has no great choirs of angels to announce the resurrection. Only one angel was there to greet the women. No star shone in the heavens to guide wise ones from the east to tell that Jesus rose from the dead. So even with all these signs, the people surrounding the birth of Jesus were still filled with fear and amazement. So I guess we should give some grace to these three women alone that first Easter morning. They weren't following a star or a prophecy. They simply went to the tomb to care for their teacher and their friend and encountered a messenger of God who pointed them to the risen Christ. I wonder if the reason why Mark ends his gospel after verse 8 here is to emphasize from now on, God calls all the baptized 
to join with God to take that message of good news of the risen Jesus to all the world. From now on, God's people don't need a choir of angels or stars in the night to proclaim that Jesus has become incarnate, lived, died, and rose. Because now it is our turn to share the good news and go out with amazement. And if we're, a little, if we're honest, maybe a little touch of fear. Because who hasn't among us wondered, like, I don't think I can share the good news. I don't feel equipped. I haven't been to seminary like Pastor Dave. I feel unsure what to say. And some days we are bold in our proclamation, right? And other days we're more relating to the women who went running away and hiding for a time. However, the good news is despite our emotions and actions or inactions, Easter remains as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. What we heard today is the end of Mark's gospel. But the resurrection of Jesus means that the end has no end. That is the good news. The good news is the same love of God that made Jesus willing to die for the sake of the world continues. Easter is that God's love is bigger than death itself. The resurrection is about a God who simply won't stop loving us, even when we think it's the end. God's love, God is love. God is eternal. God's love simply has no end. The women came to care for Jesus. They left in fear. But they didn't remain in that fear. They also hoped in the good news enough to begin telling other people. They begin to tell their friends. And eventually they spread this good news to all sorts of lands. We have stories that St. Andrew went to Scotland and to the east. St. Thomas went to India. Mary Magdalene went to the emperor of Rome himself. Eventually, to the United States, where people in our lives loved us enough to tell us that Jesus loves us. You and I are here because someone eventually told us the story, right? Who remembers who told you the first time Jesus loves you? Anyone remember that time? Maybe you were a little kid. Maybe you were 50. Don, do you remember who told you Jesus loves you? In Sunday school, yes. Someone told you Jesus loves you, Ron. Through each new place and time, the gospel has set people free from their fear, amazement, wondering, and even self-doubt. In each age, the resurrection of Christ proclaims that death and evil are defeated and don't have the last word. The early disciples and all those people since bravely shared the hope that lived in them because of Easter. And so our hope and the hope of those who will follow us is found in the same truth. That is why the church today is so bright and beautiful, filled with the new light of Christ that was entered last night, with the candles and the flowers, and why we sing Alleluia today for the first time in months. Because those are not just decorations and songs, they are God's truth about your life and about my life. They are signs of Easter truth and resurrection reality. So however you came to worship today, heart heavy or feeling good, 
this day is for you. Today, you and I can stand firm in the hope and belief that because Christ is risen and has forever defeated death, we can truly say we are free. We can leave with joy in our hearts because we aren't here to just remember the day that Jesus rose again. We are gathered together to celebrate that Jesus changes our lives and that we are Easter people claimed in the waters of baptism and joined in worship by the risen Christ himself who will once again show himself to us in bread and cup and announce that we are Easter people. Christ is with us now and will be with us always. Today, we don't just remember the resurrection. We gather in the presence of Christ. The young man said to Jesus, the young man, <laughs> man, this is the second time, the young man said to the women, Jesus said, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. And the same is true for us. Christ goes before us and is waiting for us in Elgin and Dundee to the ends of the earth and invites you and you and you and me to meet him there to share the good news that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
now with the church throughout the world. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of the good news. Let us pray. God of love, your word teaches that peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. Peace is what happens when those who have much do not have too much, and those who have little do not have too little. The very old and the very young feel safe and supported. Parents can feed themselves and their children and all have the opportunity for meaningful work in their community. Let us pray and work for this kind of peace, God of grace. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for the good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness, breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for those here in need. We pray especially for Ruth, Ken, and Carol, DJ and his family at the death of his mother, Jim, Susan, Heidi, Donna, who asked for prayers for faith, Connie, Jack, Herb, Diane, Beth, Richard and the Delaney family, Jim, Hannah, Wally, and Barb, Kirk, Claudia, Virginia, Vic and Terry, Shirley, Marilyn, William and Terry, Sue and Joe, Sharon and Mike, and thou, those we now name in the silence of our hearts. We 
We pray for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table. Fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who've gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I now invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbors. Peace be with you. And us. Peace be with you. I invite you to stand as we approach the communion table. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out for service for the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the forgiveness and remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I invite you forward as we sing Lamb of God together.
and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we live and move and have our being in you. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you are able for the ascending blessing in him. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Reminder for those of you who are able to stay that afterwards Easter breakfast will be served. But as you go, hallelujah.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace, serve the risen one.